Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video two, and today we're going to be talking about the preset browser. So if you just have the synth or you have it open and you kind of want to demo the sounds that comes with the synth and the different banks it has, this is the video for you. So to get to this preset browser library, up here at the top where we see our patch name, a little bit to the left is going to be these three vertical lines and kind of a little slanted line that kind of looks like books a little bit. Once we click this, this opens up our browser here. And we're going to be first greeted with this explore section here on the first left-hand side of the page. Now we can search for different types of presets here. This is kind of a conglomerate of everything we have on your specific computer that you're using. And we can search here in the search menu for different types of things, but there's also different ways you can search as well. Over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see types, and this is where you can look for the bass, the lead, pianos, organ, strings, so on and so forth. Moving on, we have styles here, and this is going to be useful later on once we start creating different patches. You can tag them in very specific ways, add your own tags, and you can kind of find them here in different genre styles and characteristics and things like that. Over here in banks is going to be the banks that you have installed on the computer. As you see, I have factory, pigments 2.0, 3.0, 3.5, and a request folder that I've made with as long as, uh, as well as a couple other folders that I've added here as well. So if we deselect this banks here and then we go to the user, we can toggle this on. And this is basically going to be all the user patches that have been created on this computer. Mine are called Johnny Boy. I've, I've done that for a long time. And it's kind of hard to change that. So yeah, it's just uh, kind of a funny thing. Anyway. On this computer, I have 1,398 presets, and then my user bank at this moment, I have 48 different ones on this computer. And a very cool thing as well, so let's say, for example, let's go to Death Rush Atmosphere, right? So over here on the right-hand side, we can see some added information that the artist used to write down here, maybe a little bit describing this patch or what it does, and different patches will have different descriptions here as well. We can also click this, these uh, three dots here, and then we can also save as, but interesting here, we have different colors, and these are gonna correspond to the favorites list over here. So not only do you have a liked preset category list, but you also can arrange them in different colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, so on and so forth. And then here at the bottom, this kind of gives you an overview of what's happening in this patch before you actually select it and open it and start working with it. So with this one, we can tell we have engine one activated, engine two activated, we can see the modulation on this wave here. The utility is not being used as it's grayed out. There's both empty here and this one's grayed. And then we can see what the filters are kind of doing here. And as we go through, we can kind of have an easy overview of what they're doing. And we can see the modulation with this filter down here as well. We can select more info and here's some tags. Here's the bank, here's the type. So it's very descriptive as far as this browser goes and kind of showing what the preset is or what the creator wanted to tell you about this. So moving on, let's say you've gone through all the factory stuff and you maybe want to see what's in the store. You can click the store here and kind of preview them down there as well. So for example, if we go to the store here and let's say Zardic Signature, $14 for, what is that? 64 different sounds. And as this loads, we have a little bit of preview. It gets locked a little bit later down here, but you can kind of preview to see what this preset pack is going to give you. So let's select Cyberpunk on this one here and play a note. A little loud, let's turn that down here. We're gonna get faking Berlin. Mosquito lead. Pixel damage. And that's just one pack out of all of these. So if we go back here, we can go through all these different types of banks and sounds and kind of see what we like. And if we want to buy a bank here, we can do that for a $14.99 or maybe it's a different price for wherever you're watching this, but that's kind of the whole idea behind the store. And then you can kind of search up here in these search banks to see if there's one that you've been looking for and you just want to quickly find it or bring it up without having to look through the pages. You can do that as well. You can also select own banks to see what you already have owned. Moving on, we have my sound banks, and this is kind of a short, a bigger version of the smaller one that we looked over here in the explore under the banks. But if we go into my, my sound banks, we can kind of toggle easily here with all the stuff that we have available to us on the, whatever computer that you're using. Next up, we have my favorites, and I've selected a few of these uh, just to kind of demonstrate. These are pretty cool sounds I felt, and it's easy to press a heart, and then they will show up in this liked heart thing as well, as we can also do with the red, orange, and yellow different categories too. So a very handy thing to, to, I guess, organize your sounds or maybe organize a playlist if you want to do something like that. I think they did really good with this browser because it's easy to find stuff, it's easy to save, save stuff and things like that. So if we exit this little button here, this little X where, the, where these lines, where the three verticals right here, we go back to our synth page. 
Now, an interesting thing here on the top left of this synth here, we have these three horizontal lines. If we click this, we can go to new preset so that we can do that now. Then we can go to save preset, but we haven't really done anything It's default. So it's grayed out. So as soon as we change something like here, then we can go to let's not save preset. Let's maybe change some crazy things here. Let's go to a analog engine, add some voices here, and then we can save the preset as and then we can type in our name. So this is the interesting part here. So we type in our name. So whatever you want to call it, cool lead or something like that, you choose the user here and then your, your author and then the type. And there's different categories here as well. And there, if there's not one that you find that's right for your sound, you can always click this new button down here. An interesting note too, if you want to create a new bank and you click, click this little down arrow and you don't see anything, all you have to do is just start typing here. You can delete this and then click here, delete this and then start typing a new bank and it's gonna create a whole different bank for your new sounds. So if you're working on a certain type of bank of sounds, maybe like a robotic thing, like as you saw earlier, you just type in whatever you wanna call it and that's gonna create that bank. So moving on from there, a very cool thing to do is you can go to export and you can export a preset or you can export an entire bank with a couple clicks. So that's very cool. So if you have your whole bank done, file i guess as you would call this file menu export export bank select your bank like robot for example and then it's going to pack everything up into one bank and you can import that entire bank into another computer that also has pigment so it's very easy to interchange files with this synth which is very nice so if you get a bank and you want to do that you just select the import and it's going to make up your browser and then you kind of import from there Moving on, we have the resize window, which is very helpful. So depending on your size of your monitor, if the synth is too big, you can always reduce the size or increase it depending on how you want to work with it. It can go up to 200%, which is quite large. So if you have a really big screen, might as well take advantage if you want to do that. Zoom in and zoom out, pretty self-explanatory. And a very nice thing I like about this synth is here on the tutorials, you can click this. And on the right-hand side, it's going to open up a selection here of tutorials that is in synth tutorials that are actually pretty good. So I highly recommend to go through these i actually had a fun time going through them i learned some stuff that i didn't think i would have known but yeah so it's 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 very cool to kind of go through this within the synth and kind of get to know one each other get to know one one and one another i think that's the that's the phrase and then some help if you need some help you can go to the user manual which like i said before it's a very good read or the frequently asked questions and then about the synth so that's pretty much this in a nutshell with the preset browser. So hopefully that gets you started to kind of listen to the sounds and see what comes with it. It's a very cool uh, library, even the factory stuff and the 2.0, 3.0 and 3.5. There's really cool stuff in there to find. Also, the store has some great stuff as well, too. So hopefully you learned something. If you like the video, please, uh, please, please like and then leave a comment down below. And let's talk about the synth because it's really cool. We'll see you in the next video.